Hi guys, coming to you from Krakow. Today is going to be an interesting day. Me and uh, Julia are traveling to Warsaw. And right now we're at the train station. Let's call it the Krakow's uh, Grand Central Terminal. And we're looking for platform number four. I think our train leaves at 11.37 and we should be there in approximately two and a half hour. I already booked a hotel yesterday. I think there's going to be a lot of nice views and it's going to be my first time in uh, Warsaw, the capital of Poland. So stay tuned and I'll show you all the nice and beautiful scenery along with my beautiful friend Julia. Right, you need to give me back my tea. <laughs> We're at the train station waiting for the train to arrive. I'm guessing this is ours. Alright, we found it, number 17. See the dangers of Polish train? You have to be able to... Uh, which way? See, another challenge. The door. Make sure you don't let it go. It's really narrow. Not like the Amtrak in the US. Stop. Sasha. No, 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 no. All the way. Sorry, people. <laughs> See, just getting on the train is already a challenge. Yeah, what number? 26, 28. 26, 28. Guys, just a quick uh, look at the Polish uh, card or let's say a room looks different than what I saw in America because as you see there's four seats on one side four seats on the other side and as you can see we have two neighbors who actually went for a cigarette break so here you go unfortunately or fortunately you can't smoke inside like in any other normal country but yeah it looks like this of course they have a business class which is more a little bit more expensive with normal seats but this is good enough for a two-hour travel from Krakow to Warsaw. Julia, say hi. This is my tour guide, Julia. She's a little bit shy. And as you can see, I'm paying her money for nothing. She doesn't really do a tour. She just sits quiet and stays beautiful and that's it. All right, let's see. Uh, Polish people are very promising, actually. They had the bottle of champagne, so maybe we're gonna be celebrating my first time in Warsaw with a Polish couple. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the central station in Warsaw there was a little bit of delay by 30 minutes but we made it platform number one well let's go and see what surprises Warsaw has for us uh, the weather is not too bad, it's about minus 4 degrees Celsius, so should be fun. Are you excited, Madame Yulia? <laughs> no? Yes, sir. So, so. Well, guys, as you already saw, that was the central station behind me in Warsaw. That was a really cool view that we get when we get out of here. By the way, this building, there's gonna be another story 
once I drop off all my stuff at the hotel I'll be back to tell you more about this historical building and by the way the tallest building in Poland for now just enjoy some of the views of Warsaw yes Julia and guess what that's the hotel where I'll be staying it's gonna give me a real nice view on this historical building hi everyone I've arrived at the hotel I'm gonna quickly show you around so this hotel is called the Intercontinental this is the 28th floor the price uh, per night was approximately if I remember right, it was about $220 per night. It's one of the top three hotels here. One was Marriott, one was this. I picked this one because of the, because of the cool swimming pool they have on the 43rd floor. And this is just how it looks, just a basic, well, not basic, this was the deluxe room, but whatever. I'm just showing you around, not to be fancy or show off. TV, nice bed, uh, office table, and that's Marriott, another one I was thinking maybe to book there. And those two skyscrapers and the legendary building, the tallest building in uh, Warsaw, Poland. So this is the view you get from the 28th floor. Welcome to Warsaw. Another view from the bottom of this building. I think, I think the name of this building is the uh, Palace of Culture in the middle of Warsaw, as you can see it. And a few interesting facts for you. This was built in 1955 by the Soviet construction workers. And this was uh, built for Polish people, of course, as a gift from USSR back then uh, Joseph Stalin sent about three to five thousand workers to Warsaw to build this building and in five years they finished it at some point the Polish government wanted to take it down and build something else there but I guess now that they are they started to utilize it in a different way they build a university inside it they build a cultural center for youth and uh, of course you can see the same building in Moscow as the Moscow State University building and in some other post-Soviet uh, republics. So you can also see by the different uh, billboards, there's a Coca-Cola one there, McDonald's there. Uh, I think I just saw another TJ Maxx on the other side. There's the Deloitte company, there's Accenture. So which says a lot about the economy of this country and how Poland for the past uh, 15 to 20 years is trying to be westernized both economically and socially and see a lot of signs with different banks western banks i believe the population of warsaw is about two and a half million so it makes it a big city it has good infrastructure has the metro i just heard it i think i just passed one of the stations right yulia so what am i paying you for you're my tour guide you're supposed to help me Oh, there goes the tramway, McDonald's. Let's cross the street and not die. <laughs> Another interesting fact, which uh, Yulia just told me for my uh, followers, is that if you look around, most of the buildings in Warsaw, if not all of them, have been destroyed during World War II by the Germans. And guess what? Especially the old city, where I think we're gonna go tomorrow there, especially the uh, old city has been floored, to, uh, has been destroyed to the ground. And guess what? Polish people, they decided at some point they wanted, they wanted to move the capital from Warsaw to Lodz, and then they decided to rebuild the whole city and raise all the buildings in the exact same way, same way that they used to be before World War II. Just an interesting fact. And as you can see, 
the city of Warsaw still remains the capital and it's still standing nice and beautiful there's a few hotels around surrounding it and then just an open space in the middle what's the name Pisutski Square Piusutski Square Okay, my tour guide is finally starting to do her job after a few hours. <laughs> this is how it is in Poland. You pay people and they don't do their work. They just walk with you looking cute and beautiful. Beautiful Polish flag waving, the white and red color. Guys, this is the famous uh, square called, uh, I think in Polish it's called Stare Miesta, which means an old place or an old square. Hi everyone, day two in Warsaw. As you can see, I look much better and refreshed. Yesterday I was tired after three hours being on the train. There was a delay giving you another view on this iconic building. If you remember yesterday, I mentioned to you this building at some point they wanted to take it down, the Polish people, because it, it reminds them of their past. It reminds them of their uh, history, communism, which fortunately a lot of people today don't like a lot of Polacks don't like it but as you can see now they're using it in a different way that says Kinoteka I believe that that's movie theater probably this says Teatr Dramatyczny which means uh, that's a theater and as you can see this building is now used in different ways by the Polish people guys two interesting facts for you some of the most famous people who are from Poland, other than the famous soccer player Lewandowski, who everybody knows now, especially among the youth, is uh, Copernicus, the famous scientist. He used to be from Poland. I mean, he's Polish. And uh, who else? Who else? The Warsaw Airport, uh, who, which is named after Chopin, Frederick Chopin, the famous composer. So. Remember Copernicus and Chopin, two famous Polacks who gave us a lot, historical figures. Another beautiful square somewhere in Warsaw with a nice European architecture as you see and far away you can see there's the stadium there's somebody's balloon flying around my camera <laughs> In case you get bored and you don't know what to do in winter in Warsaw, you can always come and practice some yoga. <laughs> I don't know how these people are doing it, it's like minus 12 degrees, <laughs> but they're doing yoga I guess. As long as you don't stay bored, it should be fun. Your dear friend is going to the 43rd floor to check out the swimming pool. Sorry, I'm a little shy. There's guests in the elevator with me, so I have to be a little bit more moderate and quiet. Let's see how it looks.
Hi guys, so as promised, I'm on the 43rd floor of uh, Hotel Intercontinental in Warsaw and this is the view for you. This is kind of the financial district where we see Santander, JP Morgan and other financial institutions. 43rd floor. This is the swimming pool, which actually gives us a nice view on that iconic building. Let me show you. Right now it's empty. Usually there's no way to get in because the line is so long, especially now with the COVID restrictions. There you go, nice view. The swimming pool and over on the other side there's a jacuzzi. By the way, you can also exercise here up here, so which is really nice and cool. So last few words for you from Warsaw. Uh, as you can see, my trip was really short since uh, it's still the month of February and places are still closed, restaurants, bars, so there's not really much to do. And as you can tell by the weather, it's really cold outside. So that's the reason why I decided to book a hotel uh, somewhere in downtown where I can get a nice view and which would also have a swimming pool and by the way they just really op reopened the swimming pools and not really everywhere so those are some of the reasons I decided to book a nice hotel where I would get a nice view I would have a swimming pool something that would keep me busy inside since it's really cold outside but we still got the chance to visit a few really interesting places I showed you this iconic building we've seen a few squares here and there of course this is not my last visit to Warsaw so there's gonna be more to come but for now just a quick getaway a uh, few of the reactions from me so far I have been to Krakow and uh, Warsaw to be honest, uh, Krakow, I like Krakow more because uh, it has some kind of soul to it. Since this city, as I said, most of the buildings have been constructed after World War II. World War II because the whole city was destroyed. It kind of has this new, the feeling of new, the feeling of more like uh, urban, busy, and uh, where it's kind of like New York compared to Boston where New York is more busy and everybody's rushing somewhere while in Krakow you get to feel more every stone every rock every architectural you know style it gets uh, gets gets inside your heart in, in a much better way by the way my first time here so I can't really judge much but uh, for now that's it uh, bye for you from Warsaw I hope you really like the short video kind of about the hotel about a few places here and there in Warsaw and let's wait for the summer and see once places start reopening uh, we'll come back here and we'll uh, revisit it and I'll show you more definitely because I'm new to all of this myself so bye until the next time